chaos and corruption have taken over the country. The presidential family, headed by Gustavo Petro and his wife, Veronica Alcocher, has turned Colombia into a circus of nepotism and disorder. While citizens face growing insecurity, uncontrolled inflation and unemployment in the Casa de Nariño public posts are handed out as if they were tickets for a concert. Not even the singing teacher of Petro's daughters is left without his share. What promised to be a government of change and social justice has turned out to be a tragicomedy of misused power, where influence peddling and improvisation are the order of the day. Did Petro ever have any intention of governing, or did he simply want to put his friends in key positions for his personal benefit? Meanwhile, Colombians continue to be victims of a government that ignores real problems and focuses on keeping its circle of friends in power. This is not a government, it is a disaster foretold. Alarming revelation, Angela Benedetti versus Veronica Alcocer, opposing businesses. Oh, Petro, Petro, one doesn't know whether to laugh or cry with this government, and we don't lack material for both. Now it turns out that Angela Benedetti herself, sister of the well-known Armando Benedetti and a former Petro supporter at heart, has let off steam like when one has a beer with friends to talk about the disasters of life. But in her case, the disasters are those of the Petro government, and in her own name, Veronica Alcocer, the first lady. In an interview with Semana magazine, Angela spilled the beans. Apparently during the campaign, Mrs. Alcocer and her entourage were asking collaborators something like, what do you prefer, a job or a good business? And one who thought that these decisions were only made in drug trafficking novels. No, sir. In Colombian politics, it seems that elections are like the menu of the day where they ask you if you want soup or dry. It's just that Veronica Alcocer doesn't seem to be very interested in the social work expected of a first lady, according to Benedetti. No, no, she seems to have been more interested in securing her contacts and influence. Ah, politics, always so full of surprises and betrayals. And if not, let Angela say it, who confessed that her relationship with Al Coker was very close during the campaign, but that after Petro took over the presidency, that friendship faded faster than a hot coffee on a cold afternoon. Once in the Casa de Nariño, bye. Goodbye to campaign friendships. According to Benedetti, Alcocer wasn't even interested in maintaining cordial contact. On the contrary, she left her on red, like when you write to your crush and no one sends you a message. But not only that, no. Veronica, says Benedetti, offered positions like someone who hands out flyers on the corner. Do you want to lead the ICBF or should I get you a nice contract? Well, according to Benedetti, Alcocer wanted to have control of the key appointments in the government, but not out of love for children or social programs, but because power is power, my children. Of course, Benedetti doesn't hold anything back. He says that Veronica Alcocer isn't even a good person. Oh, very serious. That she treated the campaign collaborators badly, and that, instead of thinking about social projects, she preferred to rub shoulders with businessmen and NGOs. So, who wouldn't be disillusioned? Benedetti was clear. Al Coker focused more on power relations than on social work. Benedetti's anecdote is one of those that one does not know if it is sadder or more comical. According to her, in Petro's campaign headquarters, if you wanted to go to the bathroom, you had to take your purse because they stole your mirrors and even your glasses. Imagine that level of disorganization, as if we were in a slum where you have to be more careful with your belongings than with campaign promises. And speaking of promises, Benedetti also reveals her disappointment with Petro himself. She says she sees him as a disconnected leader who says one thing one day and another the next. It seems that those of social change remain just that, promises. What we have, according to Benedetti, is a government entangled in scandals and internal controversies, as if Petro were trapped in his own chaos. Benedetti makes it clear that Petro has serious problems with improvisation and lack of planning. We see this every day. A minister of culture who was his daughter's singing teacher, a director of the ICBF, who was a neighbor and had drinks with the president. Oh, Petro, even when distributing positions, you have to have criteria. Benedetti's sister also asks herself, where is the leadership he promised so much? What she sees is a president who does not know how to coordinate his government and who is surrounded by people who do not share his ideals. And what about Alcocer? Well, it seems that the first lady is more concerned about maintaining her social status than about the children or the well-being of the country. How about that? So, dear friends, what this interview makes clear to us is that in the Petro government, there is not only chaos, but also opportunism, disillusionment, and of course, a good dose of disorganization. May God protect us. But hey, in the meantime, we keep laughing because in this country, humor is the only thing that is not taken away from us. Still, cheers to that.
In my opinion, man, this no longer seems like a presidency, but rather an episode of The Simpsons with Petro as Homer, but without the funny part, of course. At what point did we reach this level of disorder in the government? What Angela Benedetti is saying is a reflection of the chaos that we are all seeing from the outside. But oh, how different it is when someone who was in the pigsty comes out and confirms that yes, Indeed, the First Lady is out there deciding who will be the next director of a public entity as if she were handing out tickets for a concert. Honestly, what Veronica Alcocer is doing is offering positions as if she were the lady who sells coffee in the office. Do you want a coffee or do you prefer a ministry? Sounds more like a bad joke than a political strategy. The most worrying thing is not that Alcocer asks these questions, but that it seems that she really takes it seriously. Instead of worrying about the social problems of this country, what she is most interested in is knowing if you like business or positions more. What an ethical dilemma. It is as if she were offering you to choose between an empanada or an arepa with cheese. But of course, the one who chooses badly ends up with nothing, like Benedetti, who was left watching a spark when he thought that when Petro won, they would continue being accomplices. The first lady, who is supposed to be involved in social issues, turns out to be more of a job broker. And mind you, we are not making this up. It is said by a person who was there, watching how the whole political stew was cooked. How surreal is all this? Seriously, I don't know if we are in an episode of Colombian politics or if this is part of the plot of a poorly written soap opera. And well, speaking of poorly written, Gustavo Petro's administration is just that, a soap opera, but without a happy ending. Benedetti did not hold anything back and made it clear. Petro is a chaotic leader disconnected from reality, surrounded by people who do not even share his ideals. Of course, how is he going to share them if the positions are being distributed like neighborhood raffles? Everything is improvisation, from the appointments to the daily decisions. We don't even know if what he says today is going to be the same as what he says tomorrow. No way. In this country, one cannot even sleep peacefully, because who knows what other novelty this government will come up with when the sun rises. Now, returning to the presidential family, it turns out that Veronica Alcocer, instead of promoting social welfare campaigns, is more busy making sure that her friends and acquaintances occupy key positions in the government. Even the singing teacher of Petro's Girls has a position. Oh no, but if that is not influence peddling, I don't know what is. I can already imagine Petro's daughter saying, Dad, can you put the lady from the little store in the Ministry of Commerce? She sells us some really good gum. And Petro, of course, all excited. But the darkest part of all this, and this is where the black humor comes in, is that meanwhile the country continues to be mired in the same problems as always. Because while they play musical chairs with public officials, Colombians continue to deal with insecurity, inflation, unemployment, and everything that they seem to ignore from the comfort of the Casa de Nariño. It is as if they were playing at governing and we were the puppets in that game. Petro's government has proven to be a mix of chaos, disorder, and total disinterest in the country's real problems. They care more about maintaining their circle of power than fulfilling the promises they made during the campaign. Benedetti's case is just the tip of the iceberg, and if that already leaves us speechless, I don't want to even imagine what else is underneath. At this point, one wonders if Petro really wanted to be president or if he just wanted to be in power to see what he could do with it, because he has no leadership at all. What we have is an absent leader, as Benedetti rightly says, who every time he opens his mouth, it is to make more mistakes. And so we are, with a government that promises a lot and does little, but yes, it fights with everyone, even with its shadow. In short, this seems like a bad comedy where we can't even laugh anymore because we are paying the consequences of all this mess. But well, we will continue to watch from the sidelines, waiting to see what other disaster Petro's government brings us. Of course, at least we already know that if we ever want a position in the government, we just have to serenade the presidential family. Maybe they will name us ministers. What this news makes clear is that Gustavo Petro's government is not only mired in improvisation, but also in chaos and corruption. Veronica Alcocer, far from fulfilling the responsibilities expected of a first lady, has been playing at being the great distributor of public posts, ensuring that her friends and acquaintances occupy key positions while the country sinks into real problems. The influence peddling is so blatant that even the singing teacher of Petro's daughters has secured his position. This is nothing more than a betrayal of the Colombian people who voted for change and received a political circus instead. This government, which promised social justice, is proving to be a mockery for all Colombians. Every day that passes, the evidence of disorganization, incompetence, and lack of interest in the well-being of the nation becomes clearer. Petro is not the leader that Colombia needs. 
He is a leader who is disconnected from reality and more concerned with keeping his inner circle in power than with fulfilling his campaign promises. It is time to open our eyes and demand answers. We cannot allow this political circus to continue to manage the destiny of our nation. While they play at being the government, we suffer the consequences. Enough of so much corruption and disorder. If you are fed up with this government disaster, if you want to be informed and know the truth behind the chaos in Colombia, subscribe to our channel. Here we will tell you what the traditional media does not want you to know. Join our community and let's fight together to defend our country from this misrule. Click now and subscribe so you don't miss any video. Let's not stay silent.